that energy, energy was going to start drying up, that there were going to be world crisis in terms of energy. Right? There's not enough oil. China and India are industrializing at a very rapid rate. The United States is not doing anything in terms of conservation. And the lines are going to cross right away, anytime soon, in the next few years. So the Cheney Energy Commission is designed to do that. They know that they have a recalcitrant Middle East. They know that, and, and this is a really important part of it, the Middle East could increase oil production if they went headlong into just simply sucking all the oil out of the land and developing all of their own reser uh, un, un, uh, uh, unmanaged reserves. But they don't want to do it. The, the countries of the Middle East, even Saudi Arabia, don't want to do it. Why should they do it? Why should they start pumping oil like crazy, lowering the price, and wh what do they do with the money? They invest it in the United States, an economy which is very, very shaky, that they don't particularly find attractive. And so what they'd rather do is pump it out rather slowly, let the price of oil go up, and so on and so forth. So they can't even hope to have these regimes in the Middle East do this. There's no other sources of oil. All of the big oil strikes that you hear about are tiny. That whole North Shore of Alaska stuff is a drop in the bucket. It can't really help anything, right? And not only that, what we have is what's our ace in the hole? We've got one thing, the military. So the marriage gets made by the Cheney Commission, right? According to then Secretary of the Treasury, Paul O'Neill, whose book is a real revelation, by the way, Iraq was very much on the mind of Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld at the first meeting of the National Security Council, January 31st, 2001. This is before 9-11, folks. Seven months before 9-11. At the meeting, Rumsfeld argued that the Clinton administration's Middle Eastern focus on Israel and Palestine should be unceremoniously dumped. This is Rumsfeld. What we really want to think about is going after Saddam. Regime change in Iraq, he argued, would allow the U.S. to enhance the situation of the pro-American Kurds, redirect Iraq toward a market economy, notice the market economy part, and guarantee a favorable oil pro uh, policy. Now, what did the Cheney Commission decide to do? Well, here's what it was. First of all, they rejected out of hand what most of us would think would be a, a, you know, a no-brainer in this situation, that you have to go headlong into oil conservation, and alternate sources of energy. That that's the only long-term solution to this crisis, and this is what we ought to do. They rejected it out of hand. I mean, there's some interesting things in O'Neill about that, how that wasn't even under consideration. Secondly, they decided, here's the answer for us. We need the Middle East to double output, double their output. What this means is, is that we have to go in there and find a way, right, find a way to get these countries to agree to this. Now, they have no faith in any Middle Eastern government doing it, so what they want to do is they want to get the Middle Eastern governments to reprivatize the oil so that they can get the big international energy companies, the oil companies that were mentioned earlier today, the five same oil companies that Antonio Juhas mentioned earlier today, to go in there and invest billions of dollars in order to suck the oil out as fast as they can. By their reckoning, they could buy 15 years before the lines crossed and then we'll take the 15 years to figure these things out. Now, I think one of the things we should take from this, uh, this, conclu this conclusion that they came to, right, is that the war in Iraq and energy policy and conservation and alternate energy are all tied together in a huge package here because what the Clinton administration has done is made the United States dependent on the conquest of Iraq. Iraq is the linchpin, and by the way, what they, what they do is, is they start meeting jointly. The Energy Commission starts meeting jointly with the National Security Council. The two groups meet together, and they form a way of melding together the two policies, right? The policy, America's military policy, and America's energy policy. And the focal point becomes Iraq. Okay. The focal point becomes Iraq. And this is exactly what they decide to do. And they decide that the only solution here, they'll never get these countries to double oil production on their own. What the United States has to do is knock over Iraq, set up a client government that's completely compliant with American needs. And notice that you're not going to get an authentic government of Iraq to go along with this. It's against their economic and political interest. So you have to have a client regime that's under your control. And then what you do is you double, and then double again Iraqi oil production, because Iraq is the one, 
Uh, Antonio mentioned this earlier today too. Uh, Iraq might have more oil than Saudi Arabia. They haven't done any exploration in the last 20 years there. And there might be a whole bunch more than we know, but we already know that they're not even exploiting what they have. So that'll be the first place. And then use the American presence in Iraq to bully the rest of the Middle East into doing this, Not notably Iran. And if Iran doesn't come across, well then we can invade them too. So the whole thing was a chain of conquests and the setting up of the United States as the dominant influence in the Middle East, right? By March 2003, O'Neill says, actual plans were already being discussed to take over Iraq and occupy it. This is before 9-11. Complete with disposition of oil fields, peacekeeping forces, war crimes tribunals, carrying forward an unspoken doctrine of preventive war. And I'll finish with this. Um, this is what Rumsfeld said at one of the National Security Council meetings. He said, imagine what the region would look like without Saddam and with a regime that's aligned with U.S. interests. It would change everything in the region and beyond. This beautiful, m magnificent view of Iraq as the linchpin of American world hegemony, the Middle East and beyond, right, is the vision that still is contained. It's contained in these little comments like Obama's comment maintaining our influence in the Middle East. That vision is part of that comment. And that's why after four, five years in one country, six, seven years in the other country, right, they want to just amplify and extend their commitment because this is their strategy, not only for the United States as a, as a world power, but also it's their strategy for energy. It's their domestic strategy. It's we're going to make the American economy healthy again by opening up these countries for the exploitation by our big, by our big companies. It's their entire strategy. It's the only one they have. And if we want to stop the war in Iraq, we have to pay attention to the fact that we have to stop the entire strategy, all the way down to arguing for conservation and alternate energy. I thank you.